I uh, asked my developer to prepare a simple shopping cart project, which is uh, it uses some ideas from the shopping cart template, but we simplified it significantly. So you can actually learn something from it. And as usual, uh, all project will be available in members area shortly after the webinar. So it will be shopping cart project for PHP runner and ASPRunner.net. So this is how it looks for the end user. You see your inventory. It calculates, uh, checks uh, quantity of hand. And uh, if we no longer have a specific item, it will say out of stock. So you can add it to the cart. Add to cart. Uh, there is a little animation here. And you can see that quantity of uh, items in the shopping cart increased. Let's take a look what we have in the shopping cart. Once we leave the focus of the quantity field, the total is recalculated. So now our total is 95 now. And probably if we go to back to inventory, add to cart option is available. So let's start with add to cart button. Uh, it has at least uh, three different interesting ideas that we want to talk about is our add to cart you may notice that add to cart is not a button this is a regular field that has a view as and edits as settings we added add to cart as an additional dummy field to our sql query and now we can assign view as properties to this field instead of uh, adding a button. Let's take a look, closer look at this code. I will uh, probably just copy it to Notepad. And we take a look at this, see what it does. Uh, again, this is code for PHP. We will do the same for .NET code as well. Uh, first of all, we retrieve we take, uh, retrieve the data of the current current logged in user. Uh, the idea is if our current user is an admin, we don't need to display add to cart button. So admin UI is only for admin actions, so we just don't need anything. So if user data group type is not admin then we don't do anything all this code will only run if our user is not an admin uh, second thing that we do we take a look at the placed quantity this is the data that is currently uh, this is the number of items that is currently in the shopping cart table but the order wasn't placed yet. So we don't want to allow overbooking. We only want to sell what we have on hand. So we need to account to the data that someone currently added to the shopping cart. The second uh, second thing that we do, you can see it here. It's okay. it a little better. We perform a SQL query. We want to see how much, uh, how many items of this type we already have in our shopping cart. Uh, item ID is our ID of the item for this specific user. Uh, the idea is you calculate how much we have left of this item that is not on hold, that is not on uh, shopping cart table at the moment. And if what we, what we have left is more than zero, we display a button. If we don't have enough quantity on hand, we display out of stock. Uh, you may want to ask, so we have created a button in our code, right? How do we assign a handler 
to this button. That's uh, uh, this is an interesting technique that we're going to show you here. So this is the button. It has an ID, which is add to cart underscore item ID. And uh, now if we there is also like item ID attribute here. Let's uh, take a look how it looks in HTML, right? For the item that does it is. So we right click on the button here, choose inspect. And it shows us uh, the HTML for this button. So button primary class, which means a blue button in a default theme. ID is add to cart five. Five is the ID of this item. And item ID is a separate attribute, which is also five. But as you can see, there is no handler assigned to this uh, button. So what happens when we click it? Because we clicked it already and we saw that it worked. So what is actually happening and where this code is coming from? Let's go back to the events section of uh, inventory table. And if we go to JavaScript unload event, take a look at this. So there is a technique that allows you to assign a JavaScript handler to any element on the page using uh, jQuery's bind function. How it works? First of all, we need to specify the uh, selector of uh, HTML element that we're going to add our handler to. So in our case, the element name is A, which is a hyperlink. And the ID starts with, this is a syntax for ID starts with add to cart underscore, which matches our ID of the item, which is add to cart five. And this way it, uh, we can assign handlers to all our buttons all of them have id like add to cart 5 add to cart 6 that's the idea of button we check and the next one could be 6 and the next one can be 77 it's idea of the item they don't need to be sequential and they come in from the database anyway by using this code we assign a handler on click event that will execute when we click any of those buttons. Uh, what's happening next? Uh, we doing the animation. If you remember, when we click Add to Cart, it creates a copy of the image that belongs to this item. And we calculate coordinates of the source image and uh, image and a uh, shopping cart item and we with the help of jQuery we send it to to the shopping cart uh, there is a little more than just that so here we just prepare uh, we calculate the container that holds our picture and then we create a variable with the picture itself. Uh, this may sound uh, look a little bit complicated. This is all jQuery. And uh, we'll probably have a different webinar that will decipher this kind of syntax in uh, greater details. Again, may sound a little complicated, but at the end, this variable will hold the uh, image tag and we pass it as a parameter to our add to cart function. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the add to cart function. 
there is a bunch of uh, additional functions here that we use so what it does here first of all uh take a look at this uh this is the way how we, you can perform your own ajax requests in uh, php runner or is runner.net let's uh you probably remember there is a way how you can intercept all ajax requests so what we do here we get in the url of the list page of inventory and as a parameter we send uh, item id let's take a look at the actual ajax request in our web browser okay uh we switch to network tab okay i would use the font a little bit because it's too big okay let's take a look uh for instance we want to add to cart this uh dress and you can see here we perform a adjust request to inventory list php where item id equals seven the, this request is originated in this function that's the url of the list page of inventory table and then we add item id here parameter and the value of item id we, we just calculated which is seven for our address and depending on like if you have enough uh quantity on hand for this item we uh, either display a message which you would usually say uh we don't have enough uh quantity of this item or we actually add that uh, item to the cart